Okay guys, I thought we'd do something a little bit different today. Um, I've been looking around for something easy to make chair-wise and having done a little bit of research, I've seen Viking chairs. I think we're going to have a go at making one of these today. So let's go into the woods, see if I can find some wood suitable and we'll have a go at making one. Let's go. Now then, Here's a piece of, uh, I think it's goat willow. Um, maybe this might be just wide enough. It's, it's come off a tree that's damaged. Might be suitable. Yeah, I think we might have a go at this. Um, might be time to uh, get the PPE on, get the chainsaws out, and let's see what we can do. Okay, not the most ideal piece of wood, but let's get it back to the workshop, put it into some planks and see what we've got. Time to use the timber tongs. These are absolutely wonderful, worth the weight in gold, about 20 pounds. If you do a lot of moving about of wood, these are the things to use. Okay, um, we're going to plank this wood up. Now, you can buy milling machines which allow you to get a perfectly flat base. Um, when making chairs or bits of furniture, and for me, I haven't got a mill, I actually cut them by hand. So I'm going to show you how I do that uh, out here, which is simply freehand with a chainsaw. Can't stress enough, wear PPE, wear some decent chainsaw trousers and make sure when you're doing your cutting don't cut onto yourself that is a big no-no make sure you're wearing good eye protection ear protection and obviously a hand protection as well upper protection is optional thought I'd mention that let's go Okay, so first things first, as you could see this wood was a little bit on the bent side, so I've taken one slice to give me a relatively flat edge to work with. Now it's a little bit on the rough side, but I'll show you later how we can use a chainsaw to effectively flatten that down. But first we need to get some more planks out of this one. Just a, a quick note, when choosing a thickness of plank, it depends on what you want it for goes without saying, if you need something to be really strong and the wood that you're using which, like this wood, is not you know, the hardest of woods then you might want to go at least an inch, inch and a half thick. Good guide for that that I use is using your thumb. If you use a thumb across the top it's approximately an inch. So I make sure that I've got way over an inch and a half when I do my cutting. And that's what I'm going to do now, about an inch and a half. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so this plank I made a little bit thinner. This is going to be the uh, um, uh, sitting plank and uh, as you can see you never quite know what you're going to get inside wood. Never. Got a hole through there. You can see that. So um, that's, one, that's one way to plank wood. Um, when it comes down to doing planking as you could see make sure your chainsaw if it goes through 
is to one side of you, never so it can fall into your body. Even when you're wearing PPE and protection, you don't want that to happen. Ensure that it can't do that, that would be my advice. Right, what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna show you how to use a chainsaw to plane down or flatten a piece of wood um, to make it a bit more smoother. Okay, so I said I was gonna show you my technique for um, planing down using a chainsaw to get wood looking a little bit flatter. Um, this technique, it does use a chainsaw in a, what I would say is an unorthodox technique. It's a technique that I learned from chainsaw carvers and um, ultimately uh, I have to stress that the way that we're gonna be using the chainsaw is not how the chainsaw is designed to be used and it will, if you use it a lot, which I do not, I use it just a small amount, then potentially it could wear your chain out on one side wear your bar down on one side. However, as long as you maintain your chainsaw properly and you keep an eye on your bar and your chain, there's no reason why occasionally you can't use this technique. Um, it's one that I've been using when I make my benches and I use big saws as well as small saws. I've chosen to try and use this saw today um, solely for what we're doing. And for those chainsaw people out there, it's a 0.325 bar uh, chain. So it's quite a big chain. Right, I'll show you. Okay, so as you can see, uh, using that technique um, doesn't take very long and the wood it's still got lines in that of course it's still got chainsaw marks but it's a lot smoother than it was and what you can do is either use a smaller chainsaw which you might see in a minute I've got a smaller saw that you could put an even finer edge on it or of course you can do it with a plane a draw knife any other technique you wish this is very much about getting it rough however I actually find when you're making a chair or something a bench for the garden this kind of finish is actually quite good, it's durable, and it's almost non-slip. So, let's have a look at putting these two pieces of wood together and seeing how we're going to create our Viking chair. Which, just so that, you're, that you know, this is the first one that I've ever done. Never made one before, so this is a bit of an experiment. So if it all collapses at the end, we'll know why. Let's see what we can do. Okay, I'm going to move on to chainsaws and just, um, or move on to my other chainsaw, just for the, uh, everybody's benefit, um, for those people like chainsaws, I've been using a Husqvarna 550 XP chainsaw, which was the first saw that I used, and that's got a uh, 50 odd cc engine and a 0.325 inch uh, chain. I'm gonna move on to this. This is the, um, uh, I really, really like this saw. This is the, the still MS150C. This is, I believe, the smallest saw that still actually do. In fact, I'm pretty sure the kid's toy version is about the same size. This comes in um, top-handled or rear-handled. I obviously get the rear-handled one for what I use it for. It's got a, uh, a still rollomatic chain, which uh, I find really, really good for doing uh, bits of carving on there. It's a small chain, leaving a really good uh, finish, and it's 10 inches long. So it's not a carving bar per se, but it's so small, we do quite well. Right. After the chainsaws, um, we're going to move on to this. Now, Viking chair, never made one before. Basically, what we need to be looking at um, is about a third of the way along uh, the chair. Um, we're going to use the thicker part for the back and the support, and the thinner part, which is slightly wider, will be for the seat. So, um, I'm quite intrigued to how this is going to turn out, because we do have that to contend with there, which I'm, uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm thinking about uh, possibly just chopping that off. Anyway, next job is to get the hole in. So we've got to look at the width of the wood that we've got here and we have to transfer that over onto, onto this. Now, two options. You can put your piece of wood roughly on and you can make a couple of marks using, um, for example, a knife, uh, which is what I'm going to do, or potentially use a piece of... Um, uh, a piece of, uh, of, of, of charcoal or whatever you want to do. Now, 
marking it on both sides give me a rough idea and I say rough idea so you probably can't see the marks there's one there and there's one there gives me a guidance now what I'm gonna do completely and this is what I like about doing bushcraft um, bushcraft furniture and things you can sort of make it in your mind I've seen various people make these chairs actually cut the slot in at a certain angle I'm gonna to stick to a simple 90 degrees because I think that's easy no problem and I know I can probably do that with a chainsaw so I'm gonna go for a 90 degree cut I'm gonna position it um, I'm gonna position it over uh, over my hole here so that I can uh, I can get my saw in and again I'm gonna to keep to the side so that there's no risk of the blade coming and hitting me uh, in my leg even though you're wearing chainsaw protection you don't want to do that so I'm gonna get cutting into there using my little still Okay, so using the small still saw, I managed to put a slot hole in there. There you can see. Again, it's quite rough. We can tidy that up with a knife. I'm not going to, I want to make this completely using just a, ch a chainsaw, just to give you a, a realistic idea of how long it takes to make something like this. And again, experiment, never done it before. What this does mean though is, when we look at the size of this hole, we have to bear in mind there's got to be enough wood at either side to keep a bit of strength there because ultimately the strength is going to be uh, on this back. Now, that's why I've chosen the thick part for the back because this bit of wood here is going to make the difference. Now, I'm going to put this down, we're going to have a look and we're going to decide on what we're going to do with this. And uh, got to be honest, either way I'm going to have to cut this thin enough to get down to here. Now the good news is the heartwood here that you can see, bearing in mind that this has come off of a defective tree, again just in case it collapses when I sit on it. So what I'm probably going to do, uh, I'm going to have to get rid of this because that's just absolutely no good to anybody. Um, although it's a shame really because um, that might have made a, an interesting feature to sit on. So what I think I might do is if we flip it over mark it up again we need to think about whereabouts we're gonna we're gonna do this so roughly we need to have a mark so I'm gonna make that mark here I'm gonna use a bit of charcoal from the fire <laughs> so that's gonna be roughly where our seats gonna come out to and that means we need a measurement across here which we can use we can use a piece of wood anything as a measure to give us a rough guide bit of wood off the floor take off the chainsaw gloves for a second so we've roughly got bearing in mind it needs to be it can be a slack fit but here it needs to be a relatively tight fit so we've got a rough width we have to have a guess at roughly where the middle is I'm gonna go with round about here so that's gonna be my middle where the middle of that is it's gonna be about there so we're looking at somewhere round about there. Now, I'm gonna do this all by hand. So, usually you can keep a hold of the side of the piece of wood with your finger and you can sort of draw your finger down here. Unfortunately, as you've noticed, this isn't particularly straight. So we're just gonna go and uh, we're gonna try and get a rough guidance here. So, when I start cutting, I, uh, I'm going to use the uh, the chainsaw to help me keep a, a straight edge. Because like I say, it's got to fit all the way through. So I'm going to now cut these sections out using the chainsaw. Now I'm going to use the small chainsaw again. Because as I mentioned, you get slightly better fit with a small chainsaw. Sorry, slightly better finish with a small chainsaw. I'm also going to 
Uh, with this, I'm also going to shape this end slightly as well to make it nicer to sit on. Okay, getting warm now. So, um, let's see if it fits. Uh, I'm going to say I made it probably a bit big because it's always easier to take a little bit off than try and add a bit back on. That's my excuse in place. Okay. <laughs> so, Let's have a little look. Hmm, well. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's so close. I think, looking at this, I'm going to take a bit off of this because the end here looks slightly thinner than around here. So if I make this bigger, it will be loose at the top. Excellent. Now then, you should be able to see now the design of the chair. Now at this point, Rather than waste any time if this piece of wood's going to break or anything's going to happen to it, before I start shaping it and making it into something nice, I'm going to sit on it live and let's see what happens. Right, here we go. 16 stone. Here we go. Do you know what? That actually feels quite good. Brilliant. Okay, now it's time to put a bit of design in there. Just very simply, if you didn't want to do anything more, you could do that with the handsaw and an axe maybe, splitting wedges if you really wanted to, um, you know, quite simple and it both goes together. Right, let's do a bit more design work on there. Okay guys, so here we go, um, completely made from chainsaw, um, doesn't take a massive amount of time to do, obviously I've paused for doing the, the film thing, never made one of these before, uh, just had a look online, saw the design, thought I'll have a go, um, I've made a little bit of decoration on the top, sort of Viking-esque maybe, I could have put rune signs in there but I'd have probably got something completely wrong. Let's have a go, let's see if I can uh, slot it all together. Let's go see if I can sit down over here by the campfire. And you know what? <laughs> it's, very, it's surprisingly comfortable actually. I could imagine that if I had a longer back and it was up here, it'd be really nice. But obviously I've used the wood that we have. You saw the piece of wood we used. Um, yeah. Really like that. Have a look in closer detail. <laughs> 